cattails are one of the most common wild edibles that can be found. If you can find water, whether it be a river, lake, pond, marsh, or even a patch of really moist soil, you will probably be able to find cattails there. If you live in the northern hemisphere, chances are cattails grow in your area. The unique features of the cattail plant make it easy to identify. Blade-like leaves that stand 5 to 8 feet tall at maturity. And of course, its trademark cattail flower head situated on top of a central stem which can stand just as tall. A small handful of plants might have similar leaves. For example, some people might confuse young cattail leaves with those of the iris plant, which is toxic to ingest. But the cattail flower head is completely unique to the plant. So when you come across a patch of cattails, the best way to confirm them as such is to look for the cigar-like flower heads first. Different parts of the plant can be used for many different reasons, but today, I'm going to focus on the tender stalk at the base of the cattail. But before I begin, I want to caution you. Although the cattail is edible, make sure that the water source you harvest it from isn't stagnant or polluted. The cattail is a wonderful plant that naturally cleans whatever water source it grows in. It does this by absorbing contaminants out of the water. Although this is a great feature, it is also the reason why it isn't good to eat cattails from a polluted area. For this reason, ditches and roadsides are never good places to harvest cattail from. Actually, that goes for any wild edible, but especially cattail. Okay, let's get to harvesting the stalks. Although this group of cattails doesn't have any visible flower heads, I have worked with cattails enough to make a confident idea of them without needing to see the flower head. Cattails are fairly easy to pull out of the ground, which is what I'm doing here. Usually when I pull up a cattail, the root will come with it. If you're lucky enough, the stalk will separate from the root. Either way is fine. The cattail is a prolific and hardy plant, and is in no real danger of being overpicked. Cattails can be harvested from spring to fall. The roots, however, can be harvested all year round, including winter. But considering that I live in an area that receives copious amounts of snow in the wintertime, I imagine the roots would be pretty hard to reach while under a heavy layer of snow and ice. I start by cutting the roots from the base of the stalk. The roots are valuable because they are packed with starch, but I won't be processing those today. I then separate the leaves from around the stalk. As you can see, there is a clear slime that can be found underneath the leaves. Although it looks gross, this slime can be used as medicine. It is a natural antiseptic and analgesic. This means it can be used to keep wounds clean, while at the same time relieving pain and inflammation. For centuries, cattail jelly has been popular for treating and relieving sunburn, bug bites, toothaches, cuts, bruises, and more. Anyway, back to the task at hand. Most field guides suggest cutting the stalk at 4 inches, but you don't have to be strict with that number. As long as the stalk is tender, that's all that matters. The white part is obviously the most tender, so judging by that, I figured I could get away with cutting them at around 6 inches. Here's what the end of the stalk looks like. As you can see, it is made up of several different layers. I'd like to draw your attention to the core, which is sticking out slightly from the end of the stalk. This is what I'll be eating. The outer layers are too fibrous to eat, but the core is tender enough to eat raw. Although I have eaten cattail shoots raw before, I like them best when they're cooked.
After stripping away the outer layers, I am ready to cook the tender cores. I figure that for a single serving, you will need to gather between 30 to 40 cattails. For this video, however, I gathered only 10 or so. It only took me a couple minutes to pick them, and about 5 minutes to process them. After washing the cores, I blanched them for a couple minutes in boiling water, before plunging them into cold water. I then fried them up in butter, with a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. The major nutrients of cattail shoots are manganese, vitamin K, magnesium, and iron. After frying them for two or three minutes, they were ready to eat. I have to say, this is my favorite way to eat cattail shoots. The cores are very easy to eat. Their texture is similar to that of an udon noodle, with a little crunch thrown in. I think this is the closest to pasta that a wild edible can get. What part of the cattail is your favorite to use? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.